praying in tongues is praying the perfect will of God. But then it is more complex than what people may just say. Because um, I'm quite sure you've heard it mentioned before that praying in tongues is praying the perfect will of God. And that is true. But then there is more to it than what is usually just said. And it is important for you to understand why praying in tongues is the perfect will of God, but more complex than that, because it will greatly help you when you are praying in tongues to really understand what is happening. Because sometimes people do pray in tongues, and in their mind they are praying the perfect will of God, but it turns out that is not the case. And uh, it may really puzzle you why such kind of, like why praying in tongues sometimes may not be the perfect will, yet the way it is known, it just looks like it should always be the perfect will. Yeah, but it's a little bit complex, so that's why I want to explain it, and hopefully you will understand and uh, make your, like the tongues you speak more effective than you, like they were like more than they are right now. Okay, so the first thing that you need to understand about God's will is that um, God's will includes the will of man. So basically, when God was creating man, he created man out of his will. That's why he was saying, come let us, man, uh, come, let us make man in our image and likeness. And in the process of making man in the image and in his own image and likeness, he wanted to give man his own will. Because you see, God has his own will. And you see, because he, God wanted to make man in his own will, he also had to give man his own will. Now, what that means is that, as human beings, our will is part of God's will, because it's God who decided that we should have our own will. And this means that, there are situations where, because God is our creator, it is his will that will prevail over our lives. But then there are situations where it is our will that will prevail over God's will in our lives, because that is what God has ordained. And now these two situations are what makes the big difference when you are praying in tongues. Because if you are praying in tongues for, for a situation where God is in control, then of course God is going to uh, when you pray, what will happen is that it is the, like the will of God, what God desires for you in that situation that will prevail. But then there are situations where if you pray in tongues, it is your will that will prevail in that situation over what God actually desires. And this may be surprising, but I will explain to you why it is just a good thing and why it is fine for it to happen that way and even why God ordained it that way in the first place. Now, when someone is praying for healing, this is someone who is, uh, who is unwell and is praying in tongues, trusting God for healing. Now, this is what will happen. The desire of this person will be presented to God. Of course, when the person prays in tongues, the Holy Spirit will present the desire of this person to God. And then when that desire is presented to God, you see there is the deliberation over that prayer. Because remember, God is a judge. So of course, when we make prayers, he has to make judgment over those prayers to see if they are worth answering or not answering. And if they are worth answering, what should be the appropriate answer to give to that particular request of that person? So for this person who prays for healing, what happens is that when his, re when his request gets to God, God will have to consider what he feels towards this person and what he feels is right to do for this person. Like that is the first thing that God will consider. Then the next thing, God will have to consider what? What that person deserves. Because you see, if what God desires for you and what you desire for yourself much, then that is easy.
because God will just fulfill it because that will mean your perfect will, like your will and the will of God, they agree. But there are situations where what God desires for you is not what you desire. But you see, because God loves you, he has to like choose whether to give you what you have desired or not, even though his own choice for you is different. And so it is in this kind of situation whereby when you pray in tongues, you will realize that God reveals things to you. So sometimes, like this used to happen to me a number of times, I would pray to God for something very specific, but then God would give me an explanation or he would give me a dream that was very complex. Then I would wonder why would God go into so much explanation when I just asked for something very simple. But you see what God was trying to help me understand was that he wanted me to know the situation that was going on when I made that request. So basically my request was not in perfect alignment with God's desire for me. But my request wasn't necessarily something evil. So what God wanted to do was explain to me that what I was desiring was not necessarily something evil, but at the same time it was not what he wanted for me. And you see, God was like God wanted me to know it so that I make a decision whether to continue asking for the same thing or just to go on with my desire or like change my desire to his desire. And you may ask yourself, because you see, I have seen a number of people who just keep saying, all I want is just God's perfect will. All I want is God's perfect will. And I don't blame them for saying they want God's perfect will. But you see, there are situations where God's perfect will is too difficult for you to fulfill. So basically what God is requiring from you, you have the capacity to like um, fulfill it but you don't have the faith to fulfill it. And you see, God will be more, like God will, uh, God will be more pleased with you if you choose to go with something that is not his perfect will, but you do it perfectly with faith, as opposed to someone who actually chooses to go for God's will and fails to fulfill it because he lacks the faith. More like what the Bible tells us, it is better not to make a vow to God than to make a vow to God and not fulfill it. So you see, this is where now you have to find that uh, like the will of man, like the will that God has given you is very important because it should help you decide whether that thing you want to pursue, you will finish it or not. Jesus also mentioned this when he was talking about uh, people like uh, people following him he was saying that people must take up their cross and follow him and he gave a very good example he said that um before before you before you before you build a house you have to sit down and calculate the cost lest you start building the house and get stuck along the way and people laugh at you so you see the calculation of the cost is your responsibility at the end of the day you will have to decide within your will whether you should go ahead with building that house, whether you should go ahead with following Christ. What Christ will do is that he will tell you the price that you will have to pay by following him. So basically, he will show you the amount of suffering you will have to go through. He will show you the, like the kind of uh, pain that you'll have to endure and all that it entails following Christ. But then at the end of the day, it's you to decide whether you are ready and willing to pay that price or not. So that if you fail, then God will judge you and uh, like um, judge you for having failed to keep your faith. And if you stand firm, then God will have to reward you because you stood firm. And you see the reward and the and and the punishment they can only be possible if you have made a choice yourself. But you see, if God made a decision for you, then He can't judge you because He's the one who made that decision for you. And that's why sometimes God will have to avoid making a decision for you and just explain to you the situation so that you make the decision. And something that you need to notice is that when you are still young in the faith, usually God will make decisions for you. Because the decisions that we usually make early on 
in our faith in, and in our walk with God, they are very straightforward and automatic decisions. And so those ones, God makes them for you. But then as you start growing in the faith, then God begins giving you more and more room for you to make your own decisions. And there is where now your free will, you have to like exercise more of your free will as opposed to like uh, relying on God to tell you what to do because actually God will stop doing, uh, like God will stop making some decisions for you so that you make them. Now, when you pray in tongues, praying in tongues is like praying the perfect will of God because the Holy Spirit understands the mind of God and he also understands what you desire. So he basically intercedes for what you desire according to God's perfect will. But in a situation whereby your desire is in conflict with what God desires for you, the Holy Spirit, who is the intermediary between the two of you, will have to like decide what he will tell God. Because, you see, the Holy Spirit knows that these are two conflicting desires. So usually the first thing that he will do is that he will try to get the perfect merge between your will and God's perfect will. So basically where they merge, he will try to get that done and try to address that to God. But where those two do not meet, what he will do is that he will explain to you. So the Holy Spirit will start revealing to you some things that you are uh, like the situation that is at hand and it will require you to make a decision and you will usually notice this whereby when you start praying in tongues then the holy spirit starts reminding you of things basically there are like times in most cases like what i have seen is that um you start praying and the holy spirit reminds you to do things like um pray and forgive someone or sometimes you start praying in tongues and then you remember some, like something that you did. You just remember something that you did and some instruction of what like uh, God wants you to do concerning that. So usually when the Holy Spirit is revealing those things to you is because those are the things that are actually conflicting with what God desires for you. And you see, the Holy Spirit can't infringe your will. So basically he can't, uh, inter like he can't, pray for you those things so basically he will have to tell you that those things are the ones that are hindering your prayers wait for you to decide whether you'll pray for them or not and also uh, wait for you to make your decisions so after making your decision that's when the holy spirit will now decide whether to continue interceding for you or not so basically if the holy spirit wanted you to repent for something and you eventually repent for it then of course he can now go on and continue interceding for you but you see, if you don't repent, then the Holy Spirit will also do it. Avoid praying for that specific thing that you are praying for because the Holy Spirit knows that it will conflict with God and so it won't be answered. And so he will just keep quiet. Now, this is something very important because there are times when people just pray in tongues and they don't pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is telling them. Because if there is a conflict in your will and God's will, the Holy Spirit is going to let you know. And if you don't handle that conflict, then you have to be assured that what? The Holy Spirit will do it, will withdraw from interceding for that specific thing. So basically, he will just go to interceding for very basic things. And this is where you will find that you are praying for something like very specific but you're not getting any answer you are praying in tongues but not getting any answer so usually it's because you have begun interceding for something the holy spirit sees a conflict he lets you know that there is a conflict but you don't take any action you don't take any decision and so what happens it is just brushed off so when you are interceding be very careful to listen to the voice of the holy spirit and any kind of conflict that arise so that uh, at least he may help you to uh, like iron out those conflicts and get the reward of your answer. So that's it for today. I hope uh, you have understood and learned something. If you have any further questions, you can always ask and I will do my best to explain it to you. So God bless you.